This is solution for number 13 of chapter 11. Research results indicate that physically attractive people are also perceived as being more intelligent. As a demonstration of this phenomenon, a researcher obtained a set of 10 photographs, five showing men who were judged to be attractive and five showing men who were judged to be unattractive. The photographs were shown to a sample of 25 college students and the students were asked to rate the intelligence of the person in the photo on a scale from one to 10. For each student, the researcher determined the average rating for the attractive photos and the average for the five unattractive photos and then computed the difference between the two scores. For the entire sample, the average difference was 2.7 where attractive photos were rated higher and there was a standard deviation equal to two. Are the data significant to conclude that there was a significant difference in perceived intelligence for the two sets of photographs? Use a two-tailed test at alpha of 0.05. So important information that we need is the sample size, the average mean difference, and the standard deviation, as well as um, the information that indicates that we'll be testing a two-tailed hypothesis at alpha set at 0 0.05. So at this point, it's important to articulate what the null and research hypothesis would be. So the null always says that there's no difference, so we would say that perceived intelligence does not differ between attractive and unattractive individuals. And the notation would be that the mu difference is equal to zero. There's no difference between the two groups. And the alternative or research hypothesis would say that it does different, differ, so perceived intelligence does differ between attractive and unattractive individuals. All right, so next, and our notation would be that the mu difference is not equal to zero. So we would expect an average difference um, between the two groups, the unattractive and attractive. Next, um, given the instructions to test at a two-tailed um, hypothesis at alpha 0.05, Let's determine what our critical T is equal to. So first we're going to need our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom for this chapter is n minus 1 because we're using um, the same individuals in each of the groups. It's a repeat measure. So our sample size is equal to 25. So 25 minus 1, excuse me, 25 minus 1 is equal to 24. So we're going to use that along with the instructions of a two-tailed test and alpha set at 0 0.05 to find our critical t. Okay, so here's our t distribution, our degrees of freedom equal to 24, and then our um, two-tailed test is in this second tier and 0 0.05 is here, so we would see where those two intersect, and we would find that that they intersect at this value here. So our critical T is 2.064. So we're going to need to answer the question as to whether or not we can reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So as I usually recommend, we'll draw our normal distribution and identify what our critical t is. Critical t 
based on the table is 2.064, positive 2.064. And now we're going to calculate our T statistic so that we can draw our conclusion. So going back to the information provided, again, we have a sample size of 25, average mean difference of 2.7, standard deviation equal to 2. So let's write that information over here. So N is equal to 25. Our S was equal to 2. And our mean difference was equal to 2.7. Okay, so let's now write our t equation. So our t is equal to the mean difference minus the hypothesized mean difference coming from the null over our estimated standard error of the mean difference. And as I often like to say, is let's replace our variables. What do we already know? So we know the mean difference was given, and that's equal to 2.7. The hypothesized mu, dif uh, mu difference is equal to 0. That's coming from the null. And now we determine that what's missing is our estimated standard error of the mean difference. In our equation, we have two equations. One is our variance over n, and we take the square root of that or we have our standard deviation over the square root of n. We were given the standard deviation, so we would use this second equation and say that the estimated standard error of the mean difference is equal to 2 over the square root of our sample size, which was 25. So in our calculators, we would enter 2 divided by the square root of 25, and we get a an estimated standard error of the mean difference of 0 0.40. And now we have the denominator of our t statistic, so this would be 0.4. And to calculate our t, we'd simply take 2.7 divided by 0.4, and we get a very large t statistic of 6.75. Given the graph that we drew, we would recognize that that's way over here in the critical region. So we get to reject the null hypothesis. I'm not sure if a happy face is appropriate considering what we were testing. We were testing whether or not perceived intelligence differs between those deemed as attractive versus those deemed as unattractive. And now Based on this data, we've concluded that we can reject the null hypothesis that said there was no difference, and we have data or evidence to support the researcher alternative hypothesis that says there is a difference. So we would reject the null. So again, not sure if that warrants a happy face because we're saying that attractive people are perceived to be more intelligent. Nonetheless, this is what the data shows, and this is our conclusion um, for this test, this independent measures t-test. We can take this one step further, even though we weren't asked to, to articulate a concluding statement. We could say that the results indicate that there is a difference in perceived intelligence between attractive versus unattractive individuals. And we conducted an independent measures t-test where T based on degrees of freedom of 24 yielded a T statistic of 6.75, comma, then our probability statement 
the probability of obtaining that value is less than a 5% chance if the null is true. And this is how we would articulate our concluding statement with the proper notation.